Bo Willimon's play, mm -hmm. Farragut North, was the, the basis for the Ides of March, and I wondered what it was when you saw that play that spoke to you, and what convinced you that it had cinematic potential? Well, it wasn't a play yet. We just uh, read the screenplay, or the, the play itself, and uh, it, it was brought to Warner Brothers, and we read the play, and Grant and I, uh, Grant Heslov, who's my writing partner, and producing partner, uh, we looked at the play and we thought we'd been working on a morality tale, probably more along the lines of Wall Street, um, funnily, strangely enough, and we thought that there was a, a way to sort of tie the two together. And we, we, I like the idea of, uh, of the questions that the play was raising, the character that my character isn't in the play at all. He's spoken about, but he's not in the play. So I just thought it, was, it would be a fun world to, to to talk about morality and ask questions. Uh, with, the, with regard to the title of the film, uh, which evokes that line from Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, mm -hmm. do you feel there are ties to Shakespearean drama in this film? Well, you know, it, it, it took, the Ides of March actually means the 15th of March, so the, part of the reason we, we did it was because the primary took, took place on the 15th of March. Farragut North is the, the original name of the play, which is a little too local specific for a, for a, a general film. And we always thought it was an interesting idea about a, you know, a good friend and a, an enemy sort of conspiring to take you out. And we always thought that those themes are interesting and we let everyone decide who is Caesar <laughs> along the way. Uh, but we, we weren't really trying to uh, uh, tell anyone that this was Shakespeare. We were just telling them that it, that it is about uh, backstabbing and those kind of things and that seemed to make sense. You know, the questions that the film was trying to raise are, is, is it worth it? And are, is what we do to elect our officials, or virtually it's, it's the same question that we all are faced at one time or another. If it betters yourself and, and harms someone else, is it worth it? And sometimes the answer might be yes. If negative advertising for the president, saying rotten things, sort of bending the truth, but the right guy gets an office and that, those elections have consequences, including people's lives, then it's worth it, I suppose. So the question is always at what point is that moral scale where it's actually, uh, it's worth doing. And that, that to us was something that we liked playing with in the film. You know, you would think that actors have this gigantic ego, and they do. Um, <laughs> but the ego it takes to be able to, you take those shots with your chin up, looking up in the air like this. I mean, it's, it's, politicians have a tremendous amount of ego to be able to do that. It's very hard when the product you're selling to the entire country is yourself, and you're just selling the hell out of it all the time. I'm better than everybody else in the room. That takes, it takes, uh, the, listen, we have to have it, and we need somebody who's really good at it, but ego is, was something that was really tricky to, um, to embrace as a, as a politician because you're sitting there going, wow, these guys, you know, they really are saying I'm the best. And that, you know, you don't see that. That was hard. That was hard. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was. I remember that. Paul, Paul Giamatti and I would talk about that, that that was the one thing that I couldn't bear about the, the character that he had, that he was in the public eye all the time. Yeah. Because I just, that's something that I, I'm not, I don't feel comfortable with at all. Right. And I don't understand why someone would want to thrust themselves into the public eye every day. <laughs> not to know. that scrutiny. You know, yeah, no, no, yeah, not even at all, you know. Yeah. And it was really, it was, that was a question that needed to be answered to, in order to do that, definitely. Yeah. The films you previously directed have been period pieces. So what was it like for you uh, directing more contemporary Well, it was nicer, easier. You know, I don't have to worry about uh, uh, an airplane flying through the scene or, or um, something, you know, modern coming through. It made it, it made shooting, uh, prepping the shoot a lot easier to do. I'm gonna try to do more of those just because the, the period pieces are a pain in the butt to do. You've said that you don't think all actors should direct, but that George is the kind of guy that should and did and should keep doing it. Is that based on your own experience of directing? And George, what compels you to keep having a crack at both? Um. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, well, because sometimes I think actors direct and people think that's about ego or hubris or something. And I don't think it is at all. I think that sometimes you're an actor and you find out you're a director too, you know, and that's something you want to do. And sometimes actors give directing a try and they, they're not good at it. And, and most of the actors I know have no desire to direct at all. And I think a lot of people assume that actors want to direct, and but that's actually not true. Most of them don't have any desire to do that. So I think the people that do like George and 
and myself is because it's something we've thought about for a while. And, uh, and George is able to wear that hat easily, you know, the director hat to oversee and lead a group of people, uh, you know, to tell a story. And I enjoy that too. And, the, and I, for me, it, it complements acting that when you're directing, it's such a different thing. It's so much about everyone else and it's, it's such a different part of my brain and heart that uh, it allows me to kind of uh, get away from what I have to do as an actor, you know? So when I go back to it, I'm a little bit more charged and stuff, so. But yeah, that's what I meant when I was talk, talking about George. Yeah, I think you get, I think you just get, you know, I did, I don't know, uh, hundreds of hours of television as an actor before I even started getting film work. Uh, so that's like doing, you know, a hundred films, you know, I've just done, I've done, I've been doing it a long time. And uh, you start to realize that, you know, creatively you need to continue doing and trying things. And that doesn't mean you're not going to do that as an actor, but you, you want to have other, you know, you want to be able to be creative in this industry and you want to continue to be creative. And if that's, if directing is something that you're interested in, or writing is something you're interested in, it is an incredibly creative process. You know, acting is one element in a film. Directing is sort of the painter using all of those elements, using sound and music and camera work and, you know, and putting it all together. And it's really creative and fun and exciting. And, uh, you know, and you fail and it's uh, incredibly upsetting, much more upsetting than when you're an actor and fail. And, uh, and when you succeed, it's inc incredibly exciting. So. I like the risk involved, and I want to keep doing that. And Devin, any, any desire to, uh, to direct her for you? Would you like to take it uh, on someday? Well, well I'm, uh, <laughs> maybe. Um, I don't know if I'm there yet, but I love storytelling. Um, and I, and I, I mean, I have visions of things I'd like to do, and everyone keeps telling me that that's, that's what I should be doing. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. There needs to be more female directors, so maybe I'll, I'll step up. Yeah. 